What is going on guys, it is Chris here, and in this video we're going to be going over the trades that I made today on July 11th. Now, before I start, I want to just make a quick disclaimer that my voice is almost dead now. I've been on a lot of calls, a lot of voice chats today, and I've had to record this video already a few times. I've been halfway through and my voice just completely gives out, so I apologize if it does and I have to get a quick drink of water. But by popular request, we are here. I'm going to explain the trades that we took today, mindset throughout them. Um, how we scaled and whatnot. So let's firstly start out with going over what trades we did take, which were Roblox, UPST, SPX, and SPY. I know we had two swings, which were these two right here, UPST and Roblox. But let's start off with Roblox, which is basically the easiest trade that I think I've taken in the last week or so. And that is our short signal off the uh, algo, right? So we have a 100 and 200 day moving averages across and through here. And I'm looking to take the next opposite signal, which is our short signal. We have about 40% profits after we take this one and through here we hold this because we have our stop loss break even for the rest. It doesn't hit and then we swing the rest and we close them for about 150% gain today. So very nice, nice little morning sell off that we had. Very simple trade to start off the video. Now the next trade that we took was a lotto on UPST calls. I was monitoring this on the three minute chart and I basically took this off of the volume that we had. Now as you can see over here on the left hand side of the screen we have a huge gap down right? It was actually a 20% gap down that we had off some UPST revenue miss news, some early leaks, but let's you know not keep that too much in mind when we're looking at this. We do have a little bit of some chop around VWAP right there, and we aren't really breaking to the downside. So in this little box area right here, I'm looking for a break to the upside as we are chopping so much after this drop right here. And we do see that, I again, I'm still monitoring this, and I actually enter all the way up here at about 12.21. So this entry was you know, kind of bad. We caught the very top. We bought these at 0.76 and at the end of the day, they're at 0.6. Now I do swing them because it's a lotto sized position. Um, and I'm expecting those to still have a pump because I think that investors on UPST are very keen on these, on these um, big sell off days or big, you know, just big red days. Let's load up some more shares, right? It's 20% down, why not? Um, and then we do see that early action in the morning. A lot of people in Discord sold these at break even or at minimal loss. They want to de-risk before the trading day starts. And I do not blame any of you guys if you did that. Again, no worries whatsoever. I would probably have done the same if it weren't a lotto size, but I held these ones, went to about 45% gain, um, went even higher, I think, to about 70% gain up here at the very, very top of this pump. But we wanted to de-risk because again, we could see a sell-off, which we did exactly see. So the next few trades were on SPX and SPY. The first trade that we took of the day was on SPX. Again, I use my ES chart, but uh, it's, the same, it's the same thing really, it's the same movement. So we're looking at the 9EMA first of all, as well as our sound wave for this trade. And what we're looking for, let's just zoom this in here. What we're looking for is a little bit of some buying after this morning sell off. So we have the first initial pump in the morning. Um, let's ignore our VWAP for now. The 9EMA is very key in the morning after these big sell offs or big pumps you can either see a retest to that level or a break to the upside. So in this case, I'm looking and monitoring these candles right in through here. And I'm looking for one ultimate drop because when I see this sort of chop to the downside, although it is bearish, we usually see like a sort of a, a setup like this. So you have a little bit of sell off right here. So it's this area. Then you have this sideways chop to the downside. You have one ultimate candle like that. And then that's when you buy, you buy on that candle. So, you know, the drawing is probably pretty simple for you guys, but that candle is right there. We have a one minute candle that basically drops uh, more than four bucks and actually $5. And if we're looking at this in real time, it was all the way down here at one point. That's our entry right there. We enter sort of near the close of that candle and we actually end up getting 32%. Now, this is a very easy trade. It's a scalp. Um, and then we see our 90 MA retest. And that is when we are exiting the trade. We don't need to hold absolutely any runners. It's just a full exit. There's no trims between the time that we entered and between the time that we exited, just a pure entry exit because it's just a game plan that we have. We just want the 90 MA retest in the one minute. Boom, we're out. And so we do not have to hold any runners whatsoever. Now, going into later in the day, I am monitoring the chart again. I'm noticing that we have a trend line support. So we have boom, boom. And we want to see that third bounce to the upside or a break. This chop in through here was not fun at all. I basically was just chilling and uh, voice chat with a few people, just doing my own thing. 
um, you know, relaxing because there's nothing really to do during this chop. It's not very fun. But when we start to see a setup, you have to, you have to still draw your setups and your patterns or whatnot if you want to play them. That's when I'm looking for either a break to the downside or a break to the downside in a pump, right? So after the trend line forms, it's very rare that we're going to see a third bounce, actually, in my opinion. So we see the break right here. And I'm not looking at volume too much, although it's very important after the trend line break. I'm actually looking at the candles coming in afterward. So I want to see us either break this low right here, because if we do see a trend line break, it's very possible we see a break and a continued sell off. It is possible. It's just not likely these days because market makers like to kind of get retail at these tricky spots because you guys probably are shorting here or, you know, retail in general is probably shorting after the trend line break right there. So we have the first bounce and then we saw this candle, which actually retests completely it had all the way wick to the bottom retest all the way back here to 3860. And then I'm looking, okay, I'm either expecting chop like this around and below the trend line, or I want to see some candles come back up, break this high, and I'll buy some calls. Unfortunately, a second option did not happen. We do see some chop in through here. And so I am looking for basically calls after the next dip. I want to see a very nice dip, either a break to the upside above. So for example, like here, I'm looking, I want to see this go to the upside and then come back down and I'm going to be buying this dip or the following you know, trend to the upside. And we actually enter right here at 932. So that's the background for the trade. I'm monitoring the trade, or at least the chart, throughout that, throughout that session right there. And when we see this dip, it does not break this low, doesn't break the low a day, or this low over here. And so that's our entry right there after we start to see some very, very nice upside momentum. And I'm kind of looking for just kind of a squeeze to the upside very quickly after this bullish consolidation. Our entry is right there at 3.7. We exited most of them at 4.7 after the VWAP break all the way up here. So again, that's about 27%. If you're just taking the quick trade just off that, nice 27%. And I apologize if you can hear airplane in the background. Lots of activity going around in the sky, I guess, right now. But when we do see the secondary sell-off right here after the VWAP projection, I'm still holding my position as I think that we could see a trend line. Jesus, this plane. We could see a, another trend line bounce, right? So although the trend line does work, and it doesn't work at some times, right? So in this case, it did not work because we're seeing so, so much chop and sort of larger trend line. This sort of consistent trend line with very, very sharp bounces to the upside, that's what we wanna be looking at because it's a very nice area of buying, right? So in through here, I'm noticing, okay, it is possible that we see a short squeeze at this point. I sent something out saying, look for short squeeze right here because it is very possible that we just completely pump to the upside that is exactly what we see. So although we had our position at the high right here at 4.7, I entered more right here at 10 o'clock at about four bucks. So that's very close to my initial entry right here because you know it's losing the theta, but we entered at four bucks again right here and we see that pump to the upside. These ones go to 11.2. I think they hit something like 12 something, 12 something or 12.5 actually at the very top, but I sold those a little bit early. And this is our basically our short squeeze pattern where the hell did my chart go? This is our short squeeze pattern. And what you want to be looking for this one are four waves, right? So you have one wave. And again, hopefully you guys don't think I'm an Elliott waiver, but you have one wave, two waves, three waves. The third wave is always the biggest wave. So after I see this in through here, I'm saying, okay, hundred percent, this is a short squeeze. I check my volume. Boom. I already know this is a short squeeze. We're having a ton of people having to cover in through here after we had this sell off in the morning. And this wave, basically, I guess I could call it a wave, is the biggest wave. So you could see the biggest move in through here. These are usually the smaller moves. One, two, three. And then after this, we have bullish consolidation. Look at this. We're right above the nine. We have not broken the nine since back here in this consolidation and the, the first initial two waves. And so I'm either looking for us to bounce off the nine or just hold above. I'm just completely bullish. There's no chance that I'm going to be bearish in this area. Again, an, another uh, example of bullish consolidation, we push the upside even more. And then this is where I'm actually drawing this. So I actually drew this line, which I'm about to explain in a second here, all the way back here. As soon as I see uh, basically a low, a higher low, higher low, and we're just forming higher highs every time off the VWAP breaks and everything, that's when I wanna sort of look for a short squeeze or at least a very sharp incline to the upside. So when we check our indicators right here, we still have uh, above the 90 MA the entire time, but we wanna draw this out from basically this bottom down here, right? So we have it from the bottom, you can just draw it like this. And then you want to catch one, two, and then the third wave and the fourth wave all in this sort of pattern. So it's very difficult to get all of them like this. 
that's why you want to extend it like like so. You again have to play it by ear in a way, um, and it's you know it's going to be tricky to get it exactly on the dot for the exact high every single time in these short squeezes. But this actually gives you a very general idea of where the top is supposed to be. So we catch all of these three little waves in through here. You don't want to make it sharp like that. You want it to be wide, like a U shaped. And then when you start to see it actually curve to the other side, so as, as you can see right here, it's going straight up. When you start to see it curve to the left side, that's when your top is right in through here. So basically the break to the side, it's not like a break of a trend line, it's break to the side, like so. That's when you want to be entering your short position. So this is actually when we enter all of our puts throughout the day, right? At the very end of the day here. I don't enter anything right there because I know that after we see a top like this on SPY, it is very unlikely that we just see a straight sell-off like that. We're not going to see a sell-off with chop in our retests like that. Very, very unlikely. So I wait for our consolidation period. We have a nice entry spot right here. And this is exactly when I enter my puts. So the first puts that we entered were SPY puts. I started a starter position at 1055, which is you know basically the top right there at this candle. And then we caught this little sell-off. And then after that, I'm saying, okay, this actually looks amazing. I want to enter some SPX puts. So I do SPX puts for zero DTE. The SPY were two days to expiration. We enter these right in through here at 0.9. And these just absolutely printed for us. So we had 400% on our SPX puts. We had 64% on our uh, 380 puts. And by the way, all these rent went higher at the end of the day. I really haven't been monitoring my positions um, very well for my runners. I'm just swinging everything. Pretty bearish. Um, but those were our two entries, our initial entries. Now we actually had a third entry at 1116, which is right here. Because at that point, we even have a sell on our... Um, on our Wolf Algo. So if we go to our SPY chart in the three minute, we actually have a sell or a short signal at 11.15. And then we just take more puts and then boom, we just continue to print. So we actually had three put positions and all this consolidation, by the way, if, you, if you're worried ever about this sort of consolidation to the upside, this is very bearish consolidation. You're downtrending, but chopping, right? So it's chop, it's a very small range, 71 to 65, six point range, tiny. And then right here, again, chop 50, 59 to like 53. Again, six point range, super, super small, but that's very bearish because afterward, you usually are gonna see a little bit of a squeeze, but following that, you almost always see a big drop to the downside. So in this case, we see a bounce off our VWAPs a little bit more clear on the three minute. Let's switch over here. Bounce off VWAP, we held above and didn't close below ever. And then we actually reject on the five minute, I'm guessing off the nine, yep, five minute rejection off the nine. And we just continue the sell off. So at this point, we're in so much profit. It was already like 150% on SPX and SPY was already outrageous profit. So very, very nice day. At the very end of the day right here, uh, let's see my calendar, I'm up 17.5% on the day. So very nice. We caught the top, we caught the bottom. Very easy day if you ask me. Hopefully this video helps you guys just for the key takeaways, right? I want you guys to be drawing this, but don't try to force it, right? If you, if you see some sort of short squeeze, quote unquote, uh, scenario or pattern forming you don't want to force the the drawing upon your chart and kind of try to catch some some pattern that really isn't a short squeeze you want to make it wide usually I do it on the three minute or the one minute so it's a wide U shaped not a steep decline like this okay not hugging these candles like that it's a it's like sort of a U shape and then that's when you want to be entering after breaks sideways right horizontally right there or wait for a little bit of a retest you enter right there so Keep in mind that is what that is looking like. A lot of that's that I'm saying, Jesus Christ. But you also can have secondary entries, so keep that in mind as well. You don't have to catch the absolute top every single time. Very difficult to do so. Hopefully that helped you guys. I'm sorry that my voice is almost dead here, but I will see you guys in a future video, probably for a weekly recap. I really hope this helped. Let me know if you guys have any questions in my DMs.